Hey, welcome everyone. It's Chris Petrie. Welcome back, everybody. Welcome back. Hey, come on over. Let's do a beautiful lighthouse painting. We're going to do this uh, gorgeous uh, seascape style painting. It's a lighthouse. Everyone loves lighthouses. Um, these are great paintings for, again, uh, doing everything, uh, you know, uh, shore, ocean, seascape. Um, boat paintings. You can incorporate some boats into this as well. Uh, but lighthouses are just beautiful. Everyone loves them. Uh, lighthouses are a great theme for your watercolors. They would sell if you were to uh, put them into a gallery or if you're going to be just uh, maybe creating some paintings to sell for friends, co-workers, family members. Have fun with it. Ha have a great time doing this painting. Try it out two, three different times. Here we have the painting, the finished painting. Let's zoom in a little bit you can see a little more of the detail you can work right from this Hey everyone, welcome, come on in. Let's get started, let's get right into this beautiful lighthouse scene. Nothing to worry about here, lighthouses are beautiful. You can actually do some really great um, paintings with lighthouses. People just all over the world love lighthouses. You could probably be a lighthouse painter if you wanted to and just do nothing but lighthouses and you'd make a great living at it. Um, I thought of that too myself when I first started watercolor because I, I just really enjoyed painting uh, lighthouses and. I had a brainstorm idea like maybe I could go out and do all the lighthouses in the world and then I started realizing there's tens of thousands of them so I, you know, anyway I got off on a little bit of a tangent uh, when I first started painting watercolors but in any case, let's have a fun time here. You never, you never can go wrong with a beautiful lighthouse if you want to paint, if you're painting for like a, a show, a competition, if you want to put some paintings in a gallery, you do with lighthouses, you just never go wrong with that. Um, and they're kind of uh, more simp simple. We could take a quick uh, idea of a lighthouse is essentially uh, let me get some uh, printer paper. Hold on one sec. I didn't want to use my fancy good watercolor paper to do uh, sketches here, but let's just take a quick peek at, um, I'll take a Sharpie here, and let's just take a quick simple uh, approach to doing the lighthouse. The lighthouse is basically a cylinder. And if you, you know, if you can't see the other side of it, you'll know that that's the top. And this is maybe where you can't see the other side of the lighthouse, but it's a cylinder. So you can kind of see it's a cylinder, and then it's another cylinder on top of that cylinder. Where they're usually where the light is. Like that. Usually by the time it's up here, though, it's all... This is a cone. So you have a you have a cone here. You have a sphere. A sphere here, so that's your circle basically, and then if you add some shadow to it, it becomes a sphere and you get that three-dimensional look to it. So you have a cone. Could be, you know, it's the same thing as a pyramid. And then if you start adding a little bit of curve to it, you get your you get your uh, feeling of that three-dimensional look with some sh shadowing. And once you add in your curves, you're starting to get the feel of that three-dimensional quality. So 
So if you think of it as just some simple shapes, again, you know, you have the cylinder here. Basically, cylinder is just, you know, cylinder. Once you add an oval to your cylinder like that, it's basically a rectangle, right? Rectangle. Then you start adding your curves. And you get your... Uh, And you can see, you can, if you look at the basic shapes of things, it's really quite simple. So if you were to, let's say, practice on a few shapes before you start, you say, all right, I'm doing a, a, I'm doing a painting. I have to do my drawing first. I'm looking at the uh, lighthouse. What is it? What's the essence of it? It's a, basically a cylinder, a series of cylinders. So here again, a cylinder is really... It's a rectangle, kind of gets wider at the bottom. Then you start adding curves to it, and that becomes your rectangle becomes a cylinder. You add some shadow to it, and that makes it more three-dimensional. Then you have some maybe some windows. Same thing here, the light portion of the lighthouse, where you have your light inside. You're doing those curves slightly. That's basically a rectangle. It's basically a rectangle shape with some grids. So that's like a grid. And you just add a touch of, you know, you're looking at your subject matter and you're seeing there's a little bit of curves to the metal that makes up the glass and the light area of the lighthouse. Then you're looking at the top, pretty much a rectangle. I mean, a uh, pretty much a uh, pyramid, uh, a triangle, and then it becomes a cone when you start to make those curve, those curved lines. So you can kind of see how with those little bit of slight curves in your lighthouse like this, it takes more of a three-dimensional form, which will make it look much more beautiful. If you're just starting out with drawing, sure, you can just do a quick, simple and you don't have to worry. You do a triangle, a square, and basically a, a rectangle. So a, you're doing a, a, a you know a pyramid, a square, a rectangle with a little bit of a flare to it at the bottom, and that'll give you a nice lighthouse. If you if you're starting to uh, get a little more advanced in your drawing and you're practicing a lot, then you're going to have that nice looking uh, feel. You're going to start adding some curved lines to your drawing to give you that three-dimensional feel, like so. And you'll, you know, you just take it each step of the way. The more you practice drawing, the more you'll be comfortable with doing these curved lines. If you're just doing some, you're just starting out, you're more of a beginner, no problem. You just do your simple square, triangle, and then a uh, rectangle. When you just, when you make the rectangle, you just make it a little wider at the bottom, like that. So either way is going to look good in this painting. Do it whatever way you feel comfortable. Again, always practice your drawing. And I've always really, a great artist one time told me, spend 60% of my time drawing and 40% of my time painting. So if you can keep your your game plan when you're doing your watercolors and you're starting to progress and you're practicing more you just want to be practicing a little more time with your drawing and a little less time with your painting but both are important you need to learn both obviously with watercolor you got to draw first and then you're going to paint but drawing is more technical takes more time to learn and is a little more challenging so that's all we have to remember 60% of your time drawing 40% of your time painting you'll have the formula right there and that's the simple formula you need for watercolor 60 40 just remember that 60 40 rule you'll be fine you know maybe you're taking some printer paper every day and just practicing 15 minutes a day of drawing draw anything you have around the house look out the window uh, you know lunchtime draw a pencil a pen whatever you have nearby just keep drawing every day 15 minutes a day and you'll be fine and then you, you know then you do your paintings when you have a little more time 
So let's continue on here. I know this is a little bit of a uh, sidetrack from our drawing and painting, but I just wanted to go over that quickly. Simple shapes. If you remember those simple shapes, you'll you'll be you'll be just uh, way better off than getting overwhelmed with trying to draw and paint something that you know is unfamiliar with your repertoire. So if you're doing mostly landscape paintings and drawings and then all of a sudden you you're trying to do a lighthouse that bit of information we just covered will help you a lot with your uh, drawing skills and, and getting your uh, lighthouse uh, really beautiful so let's do it okay I'm looking at my uh, photograph it's of a it's a book I bought I can't really show the photograph so we'll just have to work with it <clears throat> so I'm gonna look at this and say all right first we do a preliminary drawing So I do my pyramid shape, and you might just barely see that as we continue on here. And I'm just carefully drawing the uh, lighthouse. doing some simple lines to I'm going to scale this and say okay let me scale things and already I can see I've have a little bit of a this top of this lighthouse is a little different the cone on the top is kind of smaller so I want to minimize that a little bit so when you draw a preliminary sketch, when you're doing it really super light, you can you can erase and change things around a little bit, and, and you'll have the ability to do that. And kind of as you work, you can uh, correct things as you go a little bit as you're starting out. And then we say, okay, we're starting out. Okay, and then we have a window under here. Okay, and then under the window there's another ring. There's a ring underneath, which is, that's for uh, a catwalk to walk around and maybe uh, do some maintenance, wash the windows, so forth. And then we have the bottom of the lighthouse here. And then along the lighthouse, we have a roof like this. And that's kind of, there's some beautiful trees and things like that. Okay, so we have a good, there's some trees along here, so it's kind of hidden. There's a little house alongside this lighthouse. And it's on a hill along the coastline. There we go. All right, so now I have my super light preliminary sketch done. What I'm going to do is we'll take a quick break. I just want to remind you to please subscribe if you haven't subscribed. We do beautiful paintings like this. And uh, we work every week with watercolor. So each time you come back to this channel, my channel, Chris Petrie here on YouTube, you're going to see nothing but watercolors, everything watercolors. And um, you'll have a great time. You'll learn lots. Each time you come back, each week, you'll learn new things. If you don't want to draw or paint what we're doing, no problem. Just watch and learn. You'll learn some new things as you just sit back and watch. If you're not going to do the exercises or work along with us and draw and paint, no worries. It's good just to watch and kind of see because we're covering every type of technique and method in watercolor each week. So if you don't like lighthouses, don't worry. Come back next week. We might be doing flowers or seascape or uh, figure work or something like that. So don't worry. We're always doing watercolors here. Everything that relates to the watercolor medium right here. Get excited. We're going to learn more things. We're going to come back. We're going to do our contour drawing, which was actually basically we're going to go over this preliminary sketch with a dark drawing. We're going to take our pencil lines and go really dark so you can see everything that we have to get on this paper with our pencil to make it look really good and solid so that when we go in and paint, we're all ready to go and we can just go in and paint and have a great time painting the, the scene without uh, too much of a, a problem. Okay, we'll be right back. We'll take a break. And again, uh, please subscribe. The button is right down below here on the right-hand side of your screen. And if you hit the notification bell, 
all the better because then you'll just be alerted as to when our new video comes out each week. You can check it out right away and figure out if you're just going to watch or you might want to grab your gear and work along with us. Okay? All right. We'll be right back. All right. Hey, we're back. We just took a break. I took a 20 minute break. I had some lunch and um, perfect time to just get back into our painting here. We're doing a beautiful, uh, gorgeous lighthouse along a coastal scene. Um, we're not really going to get into anything like uh, too much, you know, like water. We might do a little bit of water over here. So let's just say we'll do some water over here like that. <clears throat> so now basically the concept we had was first we start out we do a super light sketch. You lay out your um, your light sketch just to get everything where you want it in your rectangle. So you have your rectangle. I have it taped off here on watercolor paper. Some beautiful Fabriano uh, Artistico extra white paper. And then, so let's just go around this here like this so we can kind of see the rectangle. Okay, so that's our rectangle. And we lightly sketched our, I'm working from a photograph from a book. I can't show the book. It's a, an issue with copyright issues. I can't, you know, take other people's photographs and put them online without their permission. And it would be awful difficult, you know, it would be incredibly difficult for me to go out and call the author of the book and find out if I can use their photographs and so forth. So I'm just going to basically do something similar to what the uh, photograph is I'm looking at. So we did the light sketch first, the preliminary sketch, super light, looks good. Now we're going to go over with our contour drawing, which is basically a one line drawing. And we're just going to go through the drawing and just, we got trees and bushes and interesting things like that all through here. Now we're going to be doing this rooftop here. This is the roof of the building. It's like a nice, beautiful home, a little, um, home next to the lighthouse is probably connected to the lighthouse so that you can walk from the home into the lighthouse and walk up into the lighthouse area. And so we have that and some more trees over here. So we're going to put all those trees and branches and things and twigs and foliage over here. Then <clears throat> we're going to start out here and we're going to go, we're going to do our lighthouse. And again, I'm If you're just new at watercolor, if you're just new at watercolor, you know, you might want to just make these more simple shapes. If you have been practicing a lot with your drawing, you'll start to do these curves, these curved lines as you go, as you're uh, going upwards. So in the beginning of this video, <clears throat> we discussed how if you're gonna, if you've been, if you've been practicing a lot of drawing and you're more skilled at drawing, you're gonna be doing these curved lines for your lighthouse. If you're brand new at watercolor, no problem. You can do just the, you can do just the same beautiful painting by just doing simple shapes, making this basically a rectangle with a little bit of an angle and a square here for this section, and then a triangle up here for your the top of the lighthouse so it's up to you you can do just you know you can do a beautiful painting without having great drawing skills if you have better drawing skills no problem you just you bring to the table what you have basically so here I'm going to do a little bit of Okay, and then there's more lines here. So as you can see, we got the main 
portion of the uh, drawing completed, contour drawing. So once we do our contour drawing, we're going right through the whole drawings as such. Okay. So we have a chimney here on top of the roof. This is going to be an orangey red roof. This is going to be a red top cone here on top of the lighthouse. Blue sky and some greens here for the for all the uh, foliage on this hillside. <clears throat> so just let's recall that. That's going to be our game plan here. All right, so now we have our contour drawing done. Everything's in place, and you're going to see how much fun we're going to have. We're going to use lots of water. We're going to actually do an a la prima painting, which is we're going to paint everything at one time. We're not really going to do a glazing technique. If you've followed me for a while, you'll know we sometimes do a glazing technique where we'll do a first wash over the whole entire painting and then we let it sit, let it dry. On this painting we're going to do a la prima which means we're just going to start painting our darks first and then work through our whole painting and just go all at one time to create the whole painting not worrying so much about different glazings or different washes. We're just going to start in, uh, into the painting with our darkest darks in the uh, uh, painting and work our way through. And we'll see how fun that is too. This is a beautiful way to paint a la prima. Okay, so let's uh, take another quick break. I'm going to fill up some of my pans here. I think I'm low on a few colors, so I'll do that while we take a break. You can take a break as well too. You know, we did the contour drawing here. So that's, you know, a good time to take a break once we're done with that. And we'll come right back. Okay, so we took a quick break. Took, does that make sense? Take quick breaks. Every once in a while, just take it easy, step back from your watercolor painting, your drawing, take a rest 10, 15 minutes, you come back, you look, you assess, you say, oh, I see an angle that might need to be corrected a little bit. Let's take an eraser. We'll just lift up a little bit here and there. So I'm going to do that. I left out a tree that was supposed to be in here, a beautiful pine tree. Here we go. Let's do this beautiful pine tree over here. Let me sharpen my pencil. Okay, so this is a beautiful pine tree over here. There it is. I forgot about that happy pine tree over here, and that looks good. All right, now let's get started with our painting. Let's get some brushes here. Let's, um, I'll take a, a small travel brush here. I have a Da Vinci Maestro um, travel brush, number five. Let's go in and we'll start doing our... Now here's an important idea. We're starting with the darks first with a la prima. So I always say when you're doing your a la prima, you're starting out with your darks first setting the tone of the painting. So we have some French ultramarine blue, sap green, maybe some raw umber. Maybe you start out with those three colors. Dark, you know, middle tones, middle tones and some dark to get your pine tree kind of look. And there we have it. We have our pine tree. Let's start getting in our pine tree color. It's dark. Toward the top of the pine tree, maybe it's a little lighter where the light is. So where the... So the pine tree is darker at the bottom. I'm just going with the flow of the branches like this, circular motions. OK, 
Okay, that's all. And that's our pine tree. It's Okay, now we have a cadmium red. Let's go with some cadmium red, some orange, cadmium orange. Let's go with a little bit of raw umber to mix that down a little bit. Maybe a little touch of a burnt umber. And we're gonna go with our roof here. Now, let's go with a little bit of cadmium lemon yellow, or cadmium yellow, I should say. And let's go with some cerulean blue. Let's make a little warm and cool. Let's not uh, st stick with one. Let's, let's mix up warm and cool together. Like so, for our roof. Again, straight paint, guys, gals, my fellow watercolor artists, let's use straight paint. I rinse my brush off, I dry my brush off on my apron. You can use a tissue, like so. So when you rinse your brush off, you take your tissue, you dry off the brush a little bit, and then you go in and you take straight paint and just use the straight paint, tube, fresh tube, squeezed tube paint and you put it right onto the paper and let it do its thing like so like that and then we have some greens for the so we have sap green here we have olive green, let's use some olive green Let's add some burnt umber to that too. So we're going to start working in our greens, this beautiful hillside here. So we're going to mix up some blues in that too. We don't want to go with all just, let's mix plenty of interesting colors. So we have some cerulean blue sap green, olive green, let's do some verdean green too, let's use some verdean green, there we go, see that? Let's use the full range of our colors that we have at our disposal here. Let's splash a little bit to uh, make things a little more interesting, more texture, texture, let's think texture. You could tap a little bit with your finger if you want. Let's use some chromium of oxide a very opaque green and again the same thing splash have a good time with your watercolors don't let them get to you you have fun with your watercolors okay so we're just going to continue on I had a little bit of burnt umber in there too as well. And here you can let some of this just have a fun time, let it fade out. You don't have to paint every single bit of your of your scene. You can let your watercolor you can have some fun and just let some things just fade out like that. Right there, see? You have your... Maybe over here we're going to make it darker. French ultramarine blue, Viridian, sap green, burnt umber. Make it a darker dark. You know, you can make a darker dark over here.
lots of paint, lots of moist, juicy paint. You don't want to be scrubbing around. You know, you want to have some really good wet paint, wet, juicy paint like this here. Some splashes here like that. That's good. Exciting tonal values, lots of variations, lots of texture, a little bit of finger painting, tapping. Then you're going to go in and get some French Ultramarine Blue with some Verdian Green. And we'll do some ocean colors here. There we go, look at that. Some Viridian. And I'm sorry about the banging. I'm hitting my, I'm tapping on my water bucket to take paint, uh, water off my brush. Instead of using my tissue, I just tap my brush on the, on my water bucket. But it doesn't, it's not so great when I'm doing videos like this. I realize that's kind of, that doesn't sound so good as you're listening. You're probably annoyed by that. I'm, I apologize. And there we have it. Some cobalt blue to top it off here. All right, so you can see we have plenty of interesting interesting colors, shapes, textures. Now, let's take a break. We've done a lot of painting so far. I think that would be the best thing right now. Let's take a break. Once we take a break, this will all dry, all through here, these darker darks, this is, this is all going to dry, and then we'll go in and we'll do our sky, and as we do our sky, we're going to blend that sky into the lighthouse where the shadow is, so that you feel like the sky is actually blending in with the lighthouse and kind of incorporated into this lighthouse versus that cut and pasted look you sometimes see where people just paint the lighthouse separate. That's going to be one of our key methods here, one of our key techniques. Uh, so if you stay tuned here <clears throat> on our web, on our YouTube site here, everything is watercolor here. Please subscribe. Keep coming back. We're going to show you all the key techniques that are going to make your watercolors look beautiful. So next, uh, after our break, we're going to come back and we're going to show you how you're going to use your sky colors and your sky washes, and you're going to tie in the lighthouse to your sky color so that it all blends in together and almost becomes uh, infused together like three-dimensionally uh, to give you that beautiful look that you want with your watercolors. All right, so come on back in just a minute. We'll just take a break. We'll take a break. We did a lot of painting here already, so let's uh, remember when you work, take some breaks every once in a while. Gives your uh, concentration level, uh, concentration of time to take a break, to relax, and then when you come back, you can see things, assess things, and you'll also be able to take some time and kind of assess what you want to do next. So once we take a break now, I'm going to come back and then we'll talk about what's the next game plan that we're going to do when we're finishing up now this painting because we're close to finishing up this uh, beautiful lighthouse. Okay? All right. We'll be right back. Hey, we're back, everyone. Thanks again for sticking with us here. Is everyone excited? We're working along here. We're doing our watercolor lighthouse. Beautiful uh, design. We have the sketch done. We have uh, the um, contour drawing done. We're now working on the beautiful luscious uh, paints. We're doing our washes now. A la prima. Again, a la prima is we're painting this all at one time. We're not really doing washes. Uh, glazing technique where we're doing washes over the top of washes. We're just painting this as we go all at one time and that's the a la prima method. So we use that a lot here on my channel but we also do uh, use the uh, glazing technique too as well. But this one here we're doing a la prima all at one time. So let's get started up again. 
Now um, I'm going to use a little bit of a larger brush. So I'm going to go with a uh, a Raphael number six. This is a Da Vinci number five, and you can see that's quite, that's a good good step up. But we're we're sticking with you know this is like a six by a six by ten size paper. So you're always using brushes that match the size of your paper. So if we were using a large like 18 by 24 paper, you know, we'd be using really large brushes, you know. We'd be using like a number 12 or a number 8, number 12 for a really large size painting. But since we're doing a smaller size painting here, we're just fine with these number 5 and a number uh, 6 round brush. So, I'm going to I'm actually going to get some fresh water. So I get some fresh water here. I have a large water bucket, plastic collapsible water bucket. I'll put in some fresh water. Now, another really fantastic way to ensure that you're going to do a really beautiful job with your washes around your lighthouse is to take a damp brush with a little bit of water in it and just um, go around the outside shape of your watercolor uh, lighthouse here. So your lighthouse you're going to go around with a damp brush and leave a little bit of... so you're just going to go around like so and go around the outside shape of your watercolor lighthouse so you're dampening the paper just a little bit with a watercolor brush and clean, fresh clean water. You can't use murky, dirty water. You have to empty your water bucket here. Does that make sense? You have to make sure you use clean water here, right? Around your lighthouse. So that means you have to empty your bucket, scrub it around with a brush inside your bucket, get all that sediment out of the bottom of your watercolor bucket, clean it out nice, and then fill it with clean, fresh water and then you just go around your lighthouse like so with damp, clean, fresh water. And you can do the same here a little bit along the top of this roof. The tree is fine the way it is. You don't have to go around that. Just the rooftop area a little bit. And so now we know we can do our sky wash without having it overflow into our uh, lighthouse. Now, there's another thing I didn't mention, which I'll mention now is the shadows in the lighthouse from the sunlight you can add some damp brushwork to your shadows this is if you're new at watercolor I wouldn't bother doing this but if you're more advanced in your watercolor painting this is the time that you can even add in some more damp uh, wash to your shadow areas of your lighthouse so I'm adding some damp and also two in, inside this light. And I'm just lifting up some water. I think I shouldn't have put any damp water on the top of that. But that's, that's not a big deal. Now, the exciting part is we're going to do the, the sky wash. This is the fun part. Wow, skies are fun. You can really go for it. And really have a fun time. Lots of juicy colors. So we have cobalt blue, and you see I mixed it in with some of that other leftovers. No problem. You can still see it's a very identifiable. You know, I we can really identify that that's a beautiful blue wash right there. And then we're gonna um, use some of this wash too for maybe some warmer areas of the sky, maybe. And what else are we gonna need? Maybe we're gonna do some some uh, ivory black and Payne's gray to get a really exciting sky wash. Now the same thing here let's remember let's get some really wet wash on the sky so let's take some water and just wow splash some fresh clean water on your paper on your sky like that. So you can see I'm dampening up my paper with some fresh clean water, both sides up top here too. 
I did more over here though, but still dampen up the paper up here too. Get some of that paper damp, you know, dampen up that paper with some clean fresh water. Let it flow onto the paper. There we go. Okay, now we've wet the paper a little bit. Let's let that sit a few seconds. Let that water soak into the paper just a few seconds, maybe about 30 to 60 seconds. Now I'm going to take a little bit of cerulean blue. Put some cerulean blue here with a little bit of that other mixture of uh, some other, some raw umber, whatever. There we go. We're really going to have an exciting sky here. We're just really going to go for it. Okay, so blue. Put it in there. Just have a blast with this. Don't worry about it. Skies are fun. Look at that. Ooh, some nice clouds and rainstormy looking stuff like that. Okay, look at that. Look at that. Beautiful washes. Now we're going to go in and do some shadowing. There's some really nice shadowing on this lighthouse. Um, French ultramarine blue maybe too with a little bit of raw umber. raw umber, warm and cool everywhere. So I'm trying to get in some of these shadows under here. Looks really good, blue, blue and some raw umber. And can you see how I've taken the shadows and fused them in with the sky here? That's what you're wanting to do here on this painting is tie your lighthouse into the background of the sky and that will give you the look of that beautiful uh, three-dimensional um, quality where everything seems to be vibrating and flowing through your painting and you're not seeing that cut out pasted look where sometimes you'll notice there looks to be something on the painting that looks to be like pasted down and here you're seeing that we're tying in the lighthouse with the shadows and the c colors of the sky, like so. And then there's some more shadowing here. And then some cerulean blue with some raw umber. A little bit of raw umber by itself like that and we put some of that here in the middle maybe even some uh, lemon yellow cadmium lemon yellow to give it that really bright sunlight feel just in a few spots and I'll put some of that cadmium lemon yellow in a few other places too so that it's feels like it's harmonizing with the rest of the painting so I'll put some of that Cadmium lemon yellow here and there. This way it again blends in with the rest of the painting instead of adding just one place. Maybe a little bit of cadmium orange.
and we are really exploiting what the medium is about. Watercolor is water. Tons of water. If you, I'm going to just blot up a couple spots here and there. If you can use the alla prima method and then also adding in some extra really beautiful wet washes, you can really take the, the watercolor painting to a whole new level. That's what we did here. And even as we're working, we can even go in with another bit of darks up here. These are the rain clouds. If you see a spot, you can just lift it up. No big deal. Blot a few. And let's not overdo this painting. Let's not overwork it. We see here how we did a beautiful job getting some really a la prima straight tube paint into the foreground here. The trees, the brush, the bushes, the roof. Then we used a lighter wash with tons of water in the sky. We blended in the lighthouse, keeping in mind we needed to leave some bright lights for the White House, for the lighthouse. And that's it. And now, to complete this, we're going to let this dry and we'll go over and do our last few bit of uh, touch-ups to the uh, cone of the lighthouse with some more orangey red paint. And um, I think once we finish up the cone up here with some red paint, I think we're going to have, this is going to be a completed painting. So we'll come back in just a few minutes again. Let's take another break. We'll assess as we go. Breaks. Breaks are great. You, you assess your work as you're going. And uh, this way you don't get uh, caught up in doing too much work to your painting or uh, losing track of what your game plan is. So here our game plan is let this dry 100% and then we'll come back and just do a few more touch-ups to this, a few more spots that we need to fill in some areas, some added paint, and we'll be all set. Okay, Chris here. Welcome back everyone. Hey, I forgot to mention if you if you haven't subscribed, please subscribe to the channel here. We're having a fun time each week. We're doing nothing but watercolors. We're actually doing some great, uh, beautiful seascape type scenes like this here, the lighthouse. We do uh, flower paintings. We do seascapes, landscapes, figure painting. Um, we do still life painting. We do everything here watercolor. So if you subscribe and you also hit that notification bell, you'll be notified each time we create a new painting. And we're always creating new paintings each week. So on a constant basis, you're going to be getting brand new videos each week. And then you can just decide if you want to draw and paint and work along with us. Or maybe you just want to watch the video and learn some uh, uh, new things about methods, techniques, and watercolor. The more you watch, the more you're going to pick up and understand uh, how watercolor works, how the methods work, how the techniques work. So it's important to watch, even if you're not painting, let's say, or trying out a, a specific painting that we do here on my channel, please know that if you watch and just listen and follow along, even if you're not painting and drawing, obviously, because you might not like the subject matter, let's say, or, you know, you just, maybe you're just want to watch and you're not really, you're too busy, fine. As long as you're watching and uh, taking in all the information, you're going to be way better off. You'll have that constant uh, knowledge uh, being, uh, you know, just you're absorbing the, the knowledge and the techniques and the methods every week about watercolor. That's just going to make your watercolors all the better. So let's continue on here. We're now finishing up. We did our a la prima technique. We also did a lot of nice wet washes on this. We added some clean 
water to our background here for our sky color and then we just did some beautiful washes in there you saw how that happened it looks really beautiful let's uh, finish up we're going to do the cone of our lighthouse so that's going to be cadmium red a little bit of raw umber too so we're going to make it a we're going to mellow out that red a little bit that cadmium red is really powerful and strong so let's take our brush and just carefully carefully uh, do our our washes and there we go straight cadmium now um, we need some French ultramarine blue, I'm going to rinse off my brush. French ultramarine blue, burnt umber, burnt sienna. Cobalt blue maybe a little bit there too. Cooler, a cooler dark. And let's just go right in there and make that kind of a cool dark in there. That's the underside of the... And there's some other interesting shapes there. And then cobalt blue mixed in with a little bit of that. And there's some more. And again, as you work with watercolor, you'll, you'll notice that uh, you just have fun with it. raw umber, a little bit of this mix here with a little bit of French ultramarine blue. You know, I mix around some darks here. A little bit of French ultramarine blue. And, uh, Do a little more of this here, French ultramarine blue and the darker darks just to get a few. Then we're going to do uh, French ultramarine blue, burnt umber, a really nice dark. Sometimes you might have to take a little bit of, uh, you, you mix up a really dark dark and then you might have to just blot off a little bit on your tissue because you don't want to start going in and doing a, like if you have to do a small detail, take some, take some, does that make sense? Take some paint off your, your brush first before you go in to do a, a smaller area. So if I'm trying to do this small window here, I don't want to go in with a ton of paint on my brush. So I mix the color I need, then I take off some of the color like that. And then this way I can do this window effectively. And it's not like I'm adding a ton of paint that's just going to blot onto the paper and make a mess. And then here we got another little shape there underneath there. Hope that makes sense. There we go. And then we have a nice cerulean blue. Rinse off my brush. Cerulean blue here. And there's some cerulean blue there on this window underneath. Okay, so now we have that completed, and there's some more. And then if you want to blot up a few spots, you can blot up a little bit of paint. And if you somehow made a, a, a mark on your paper that becomes 
uh, an issue. That isn't a problem. I just uh, I just grab my titanium white, titanium white, and grab a little bit of white. So if you if you make a, a spot on your watercolor paper that's too dark or something, no problem. Just blot in some titanium white like that, wet and wet. And you can even add a couple splashes around here and there just to give it a little more sparkle. And again, let's not overdo our paintings, that's for sure. Now what we can do is, um, we have a few more things we can do. Um, I would say I'm going to use my, I'm going to go now to my um, needlepoint brush. This needlepoint brush is incredibly uh, uh, versatile. You can use it for a lot of different things, especially when you're doing your final details to your watercolor painting. You can use this needlepoint brush so that you don't do any uh, unpleasant marks on your painting. Um, that are going to be like large spots that might develop. So if you use a really fine point like this, you're not going to have that issue of adding too much paint to your painting and making a, a large uh, area of paint that kind of ruins the details of your painting. So here I want to do a small chimney. Perfect time to use your needlepoint brush. You know, you can do your chimney on top of this roof. Just like that. No worries. You're not putting too much paint on there. Then here we have some more details on our lighthouse. We take some of that purpley, blue, grayish color here, and we're going to do some of our um, some of the uh, steel window details on this light up here. So then we just do some like this, a couple little grid lines like that. Perfect. You don't want to do too much. Um, what else do we have? Maybe there's a little, little bit of a little bit there. A little bit of straight French ultramarine blue and burnt umber. Make a dark, dark, dark there. And then we'll just put that in here where this window is. That really dark shadow there on that window. Glass. So that's the window pane, really dark. And then we can tie that in again. Take some of that blue. You can take some shadow colors. Like that. And again, let's not do too much. Once you get to a certain point where it looks halfway decent, let it go, don't keep going. I'm getting to that point now where I might be doing too many details, but I I think we're okay still. Uh, maybe a little bit of shadowing under here. I'll put a little bit of shadow under that area of the roof there. And maybe let's do a little bit of green, burnt umber, raw umber, burnt umber, French ultramarine blue, sap green. We're just going to do a little. What this does is it, it kind of makes the painting even more three-dimensional. If you can do a little quick nice little couple branches and twigs here in the foreground you're gonna be surprised at how much you need the needlepoint brush to do this though you you really can't do this with uh see i'm just doing this real quickly and scribbly i'm being a scribbler here and there we go we add another dimension to the painting with our needlepoint brush which is a critical brush to have in your arsenal as a watercolor artist, you got you have to get these fine details in to, to make everything work together. There we go.
So I think we have a beautiful finished painting here. Again, underdo it. Underdo your paintings. Try to... Uh, Try to leave them underdone a little bit. You can always come back a couple days later and, and say, oh, maybe I'll add this in or that in, but let's take the tape off. I think you'll be very happy when you do your lighthouse. You're going to find that if you have to do it a couple times, two or three times, to get it looking good, that's all the better. More practice, practice, practice. That's what it is. There we go. Okay. And you can work from this too as well when you do your painting. And I'll also put this on the beginning of the video so you can see the finished painting right out from the start of the video if you want to um, just make some notes on it or look at it and kind of assess it if you want to try it. But in any case, have a wonderful time painting this painting. It's really fun. It's a lighthouse. Great painting. Everyone enjoys lighthouses. Perfect painting if you're going to do maybe a show, if you're going to put it into a gallery, or maybe if you're going to sell a few. Um, you know, you might bring some paintings into work or, um, you know, you might try to uh, bring some of your paintings to your relatives and see if they might want to purchase one. You know, promote your paintings. The excitement of watercolor makes everyone's life happier. So everyone happy painting. Enjoy your watercolors and we'll see you on the next video. Bye-bye.